Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here with Roberto Calandrini, head of architecture and digital and AI services from SNAM. He's remote, remoting in from Milan, Italy. Roberto, great to see you. Thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Great to see you too, John. And thanks for having me here. Love the virtual events. We can bring people in from all around the world. I love the virtual. I mean, it's one of the, the trade-offs of not being in person is we can still get you in. Thanks for coming on. Before we get started, I want to dig into the digital architecture of what you guys are doing. It's very compelling in a hybrid cloud. It's got, you got all the things going on, which I like. But before we start, can you provide a short overview of SNAM? Who are your customers? What is your company's focus? And what's your role there? Sure. So SNAM is one of the worst leading energy infrastructure operators. And we basically, build the energy infrastructures and offer integrated services. Our mission is to guide the evolution of the energy sector and lead the energy transition uh, to a low carbon future. And as you can see in our last investment plan, we declared our net zero carbon objective to reach by 2040. This is why we basically are investing a lot in uh, technology, in renovating our technology stack in order to uh, provide our business line with the most innovative sustainable energy network, thanks to which we are already guaranteeing stable supplies to Europe of natural gas. Love your title, okay. love the fact you got the AI piece in there. Um, what about specifically is your role? What do you oversee? Uh, I'm responsible for uh, architecture, digital and artificial intelligence services. That basically means that I'm uh, with, with my team and my extended team of the digital technology uh, department uh, are designing the entire technology stack for SNAM. And I'm specifically focusing more on developing intelligent and usable services for our business lines. Awesome. The, you guys over there at SNAM have transformed a lot. The stack, that's cool, I want to get into that. Um, you redesign your applications map, right? So it's really edge to cloud now, edge up to the cloud. What were the business drivers and the objectives to reach that goal? I mean, cause that's really a great use case. I mean, you've got the edge to deal with it's intelligent. You got industrial, what were yeah. the business drivers and objectives? Yeah, yeah. Our main business drivers uh, uh, has always been to to increase the effectiveness of our processes and business lines, so to better support the decision of our internal line of business. And we soon discovered that we needed more data in order to do that, and we structure a very extensive IoT program. But those data provide information about the internal state of our assets because they're coming from the census. And we thought, what about the environment in which our assets are located? So uh, following up on that, we integrated data coming from remote sensing technologies. So think about drones and satellites imagery data. And we soon discovered that we needed to renew and extend our technology stack from edge to cloud, as you said, and to be the scalable data platform in order to process this new level of, uh, of data. This way, we think we will be able to end the new volume of data that we predicted will be 100 times what we currently manage and efficiently use AI and machine learning to derive insight from these new scale and complexity. So we're talking about big data. Robert, I got to ask you, could you take a minute to describe your transformation journey you guys went through and how Red Hat helped you guys execute the digital transformation? Yeah, we basically uh, started working in uh, 2018 uh, with Red Hat to set up our cloud readiness map. We basically needed to decide what to scale, uh, what to lift and shift, what to refactor in order to move our application to a modern uh, architectural stack. And Red Hat helped us with this. Uh, we use OpenShift for our container orchestration platform. And from this, uh, we're developing our new uh, application map. Then in 2019, we decided to accelerate the moving of our application workload. We started moving 10 to 20% of our workloads on OpenShift. And since then, most of our new software project is now a cloud native and developed on OpenShift. We're still in the process of leveraging modern architecture, so microservices based, 
and using our container orchestration platform and other software as a service platform in order to complete the modernization of our application map. And we're targeting 2023, 2024 to complete the entire process, but as you know, is an ever changing uh, landscape. So you basically ne never complete uh, such a task in some way. Do you see Red Hat technology helping SNAM in its ecosystem for energy efficiency and aiming for low carbon emissions? Well, I, I think that OpenShift provide, provide us with, with the right level of flexibility and agility to move at the speed of our new businesses. That's one way to look at the quest. And the other one, uh, I think it would be in terms of energy efficiency and the carbon footprint that our application workloads generate. And I think that um, in, the, in, that, in that respect, uh, it could happen on the mid to long term, probably. So it will, in proportion to the workloads, we will be able to refactor as purely reactive, so as non-blocking apps. This paradigm, in fact, for the same business service could improve the effective resource consumption, so indirectly saving energy and CO2. You know, I love this conversation. I know you're in Italy, I wish we could be in person, but I'm glad to get you on because you guys are an, kind of an example of the main theme at the conference this year, which is an edge, you know, intelligent edge and IOT, but you know, IOT has been around for a while and we've talked about it before, but now with the cloud and connecting to the cloud, that's a huge topic here at Red Hat Summit 2021. You guys are well-versed on what they call OT technology, operational technologies. And what's yeah. interesting is Kubernetes and containerized orchestration all help operators, operations people. So you have this OT, IT integration where the operational technology, old school technology people and the stack and the people and the disciplines are meeting the old IT and creating a new thing. So I have yeah. to ask you, what are these, what's that world like? What are some of the use yeah. cases that you're working on and you're planning to deploy? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's exactly like that. SNAM has a long OT history, as you said. So right now we have a complex brownfield uh, situation for our edges and gateways on the field. There are various technical components that resides on the field. You must consider that the Italian network, uh, the Italian transportation network has more than uh, 34,000 kilometers of pipeline and differently sized plants across the country. So we have several, already several use cases currently running on our data centers that could benefit, we think, from distributed processing at the edge. Think about, for example, physical security. So just to give you an example, privacy preserving local video processing for anomaly detection done at the edge. It's much more effective in our opinion. Core hierarchical processing for data intensive tasks that involves field data so that you can process the, the data coming from the field at different level and take to the central data center only what's needed. And we're also working uh, on the usual problem there is with a, with a, with OT, with a, with operational technology that is standardization. So we have many heterogeneous components and communication protocol there. And, you know, without a proper IoT stack, gathering and normalizing the data for a higher level processing could become cumbersome. So uh, security is also, is also a, a relevant topic because it is usually a preserve at the physical and natural layer. And, we, we think that we can introduce with IoT uh, three main improvements uh, about this. We're, we're expanding the level of CyberSec to the full technology stack, bringing modern internet security standard to the edge. We're pushing containerization to the edge, being able to orchestrate uh, our workloads from data centers to the cloud. And we think that we this will provide us with a high level of flexibility and a better exploitation of the geographical distribution of our data. And last but not least, we are standardizing our gateways and edges. And this will help us streamline the messy data transfer conversion and normalization uh, of the data we will receive from the field. Awesome, I gotta, I gotta ask, first of all, great job on the edge. I think that's a great vision. Obviously building in security is important. Um, having that edge 
intelligent, it's really well done. Congratulations, love the vision. I got to ask you, what's your future plans for um, SNAM's technology journey as a whole? What's your vision? What's your next step? So, well, what we would like to focus on uh, in the coming years is uh, how to best leverage the hybrid cloud environment we currently set up. So right now we have an hybrid cloud environment with a data center and one cloud tenant and having our workloads running on OpenShift would make it easier for us to leverage the offering of different cloud providers and of course to best exploit what we currently have uh, on our tenants. Second one is find the best way to leverage IoT. So um, as I said before, our focus in the coming years would be to complete our IoT foundation, rolling out our edges, our gateways, and put our new unified acquisition system to work. And this will provide the computational backbone of our intelligent gas network. And finally, uh, and this is a last objective that is will be built on top of the other two. Uh, we must find different ways and explore different ways to leverage data and artificial intelligence. So we need to exploit our data uh, in order to generate insight for our business lines. And due to the scale of our new data streams, artificial intelligence and machine learning, we think will be ubiquitous in our applications. Right now, we're already using it, but not at the scale uh, that the new data streams uh, will, uh, will need. And most of the algorithms are working on data that are apart from legacy system and SCADA system. So they are specifically created for each project. We are about to begin an exciting data journey where everything will reside uh, on a unified data platform. And our data scientists, our uh, data analysts in the business lines will be able to derive value from them. Awesome, you know, you guys are a great customer use case. I love the, the real operational impact. I talk with a lot of other practitioners and, and end user enterprises, and I get the same question and I go the statement. They say, obviously security needs to be built in, but the challenge is and where they want to, what they want to do, and I want to get your thoughts on this if you don't mind commenting. They all say, I want to run cloud native applications cloud native applications from my data center to the cloud and then out to the edge and with a as a distributed platform, one operation set, whether it's OT, IT, I want to make that, that's my end game in the short term. I want to get there fast. So I got to ask you, for those people that want that, is OpenShift a good solution for that in your opinion? We, we of course think it is. Uh, it is part of our IoT foundation. Uh, is not the only technology component, but is uh, one of the uh, one of the most relevant. And it is uh, absolutely helping us in um, enabling the possibility of orchestrating workloads uh, from the cloud to the edge. And we will be able to, to give you more information about that as soon as uh, we will uh, release the first um, distributed workloads within 2021. So I'd be happy to, to, to answer any, any questions from our peers or, or uh, other colleagues from other industries. You guys have thousands and thousands of sites. This is classic industrial edge implementation, honestly monitoring, just monitoring the pipes. I mean, you got to monitoring the system yeah. just physically. I mean, this is like a, just a physical thing. So now as you have technology, you guys have to monitor and, and get that early detection of any gas leaks. This is critical to your business. Um, how is that changing? How is that environment changing with technology? Is it more automated? What's your vision? How are you guys looking at that? Well, we, we surely are trying to uh, move along to two main drivers. The first is um, unification and standardization of how we monitor all these distributed technology stuff. This is very important because even for the simplest use case, you're now dealing with distributed application and this is an entirely different game to what we are used to basically. 
and and um, the, the the other rather the other relevant thing is uh, how can we uh, get the best from um, the um, machines we put uh, on the field. So, in other in in our, in other terms, how can we standardize uh, how we connect uh, to the machines we have on the field and how much intelligence we need to uh, put there and how to test it. And in order to do that, we're thinking about um, building a digital twin of our assets that will enable us to be able to test end to end before getting to the real thing on field. Uh, how will it work? Uh, what are the security uh, vulnerabilities, potential security vulnerability, and other aspects uh, of the technology infrastructure and the uh, data infrastructure? And we think this is very important because, in some way, uh, in order to provide the acceleration and the scale that we uh, are going to provide uh, to, to our company, we need to be sure well in advance that what we designed will work in practice without getting to the field. We would like to get into the field where everything is already tested. Roberto, great to have you on theCUBE. Great to see you. Thanks for coming in from Milan, Italy. Um, CUBE virtual is one of the benefits and hope to see you in person soon at the next event. But great use case, love your environment, love how you're looking at that platform as a distributed platform and bringing that OT, IT together, data center to the cloud, to the edge. That's a really relevant use case and architecture. So congratulations. Thank you very much, John. And I hope to see you too very soon okay. live. Hopefully. When I'm in Italy, we're going to come by and do a site visit and, and uh, see each other. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, CUBE yeah. coverage for Red Hat Summit 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.